Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and for the third part of building the Weybridge and offices and um, where we left off last week I had just fitted some fireplaces to the um, chimney breast and uh, I um, had a comment about that um, why are they offset as you can see one's this way and one's that way. Well I'm thinking to myself logically that is that there's two separate um, flues going up to the main chimney because they're separate here on the top. Anyway that's that's my take on it and that's uh, how it's been done. Um, Right, with this one, this is 80 pullins, and um, I'm going to add a battery light to it um, because it doesn't have a 12 volt DCC um, system. Or 12 volt, yeah. So, this is what I've come up with it's a twin pack battery. There, there are 20332 batteries, two of them in a pack with an on and off switch and with some LEDs. Uh, quite bright enough to light up the office. It was a little bit longer than that, it had six LEDs, but I've trimmed three of them off just so I can get them into the building like so and I think it's just gonna fit um, I'm gonna have to tr trim down the wire because it's a bit too long um, so I shall do that and then resolder them back up and work out how I'm gonna fit them into this building so I've managed to get the heat shrink off um, now if you're gonna buy one of these and adapt it for yourselves um, the plus cable it's got a white streak in it. I don't know if you can see that in the video. It's just got a white streak in it. So when I trim it, um, it should be quite straightforward to solder them back on to where they originally came off. Um, yeah, they're quite uh, good. These I got them off eBay, of course. Um, basically, what I did in the search, I just typed in a battery-operated switch with LEDs and this came up. Now that the cable's shorter and resoldered, we can now place it into the building. Um, I suppose you're wondering how you get the batteries in and out. It's just two little tabs here. You just push them up and it's like a lid and then you just drop the batteries in. One goes one way, one goes the other. And it just clips together. So what I've done with the roof is I've created a cradle on this side and just a support in this side for the for the cables itself. So what we'll do is just feed that round, bring that up through this side. That then just drops into the cradle. The LEDs themselves will just go under that little tiny cardboard tab and then push back underneath the battery holder. And if you line it up nicely, you can have one LED this side and one LED that side. Then it's just a case of flicking it on. And then we have lights. Just press the base on for to give it a better effect. There you go. And it's quite compact as well. Once the, the roof is on there, you'll, you'll not see it. Uh, this roof will be loose so you can take it off and then change the batteries if the batteries ever go flat. I have started to make some furniture as you can see here and inside this office now the detail is coming along
quite well. As you can see, I've got a mahogany filing cabinet. I've just got to add some white dots for the drawers. Um, so that's that done. And I've stuck in a few posters. And I've done the same with this one as well. With the cabinet. And I've added some posters as well and some um, information boards, etc. And as you can see, I've added a counter and a uh, chair there as well. So the desks I've made, as you can see, is just card but what I've done if I look on the ends of the card you can see I've stuck three pieces of card together and then wrapped it around in paper and then cut them off as blocks you can make a nice long block like this and well that will make lots of desks and you can even trim them down and make filing cabinets by sticking a bit of card on the top and on the bottom and then just scoring for some drawers so that's the desks with the chairs, well, if you've been following my videos, this is how I make my little chairs, just by folding card. So you fold the card up, bring it back on itself, come out 5mm, and then 6mm down for the legs, and then they just check to see if they're correct by getting a figure to sit on them. So that's the chairs. So there's one little thing I want to add to these offices and that's a table so what I've done here is I have cut a piece of card and I've worked out how much I need for the stick into the tabletop which is one of these so that's going to be the actual tabletop and so this point from here to here is where I'm going to fold it. So those legs will fold down both sides and that will create a table. Um, the table is 10 millimeters up to this edge here off the floor just in case anybody um, wants to know. You can make the tables any width and and narrow as you like because tables come in all sorts of sizes but the the height is roughly between 10 and 12 millimeters high and here is the table as you can see it's got the four legs and it's worked out quite well what I did find is if you score it before you fold it you get a nice neat fold the first one I did I tried to bend it round and I messed it up a little bit, so there. Nice little table. So that's all the furniture done and all the details that I'm going to put into the building. So we're virtually ready for gluing the buildings onto these bases. So here we go, um, once these are on we won't be able to put any more detail into the rooms which is uh, just as well because I think there's plenty in there to look at. So I'm just using the quick rocket glue to do this little job. Once this is done, we can concentrate on the roofs. Just hold it flat for a minute, let the glue settle. And we can spin it over, drop it on. Very delicate this bit, make sure I don't catch. Oh, Mr. Heavy in there.
just hold it there for a little bit. Sure, these edges stay flush. Right. One down, one to go. See if I can turn the light on. There we go. Let's see how much you can see in there. So now we move on to the roofs. Um, in front of you, you have a Eleanor plate layers hut, and it's obviously, as you can see, it's got a flat roof. But um, if we look at this edge here, it has a double stepped edge like a cornice. So that's what I'm going to try and do for the offices. So let's see how I get on. I've made a bit of a start on the roofs now and as you can see with the the double card thickness there it gives it a little bit of a nice edge um, the top piece is 2 mil card and the bottom piece is 1 mil card so we got uh, two identical roofs but uh, different uh, this one is just a, a pull off roof so that uh, if AD ever wants to change the batteries, it can do. It's a bit of a snug fit. But it does, uh, it does fit well. Right, so... The next thing to do now is to wrap the stone card around the chimneys now to give it the same look as the bottom of the building. So we'll do that next. So all I'm going to do is just measure and then cut a strip. Uh, 19mm. So as you can see I've wrapped the card around the chimney breast. And um, looks quite uh, quite good actually. Um, how I did it? Well, it's just the same as you would do with a normal chimney, just by wrapping it round. But what I've done here is I've marked on the inside the pencil, and what I'll do is I've drawn the arch freehand. And what I'll do is I'll cut down this side and then cut the curve. Then that folds around on the inside of the chimney so it covers up one half. And then when you come round with the other side, you mark it, but then cut it in the opposite direction. cut it and then they fold opposite ways to each other so one will fold that way and the other one will fold that way so when it wraps around they cover the chimneys up on the inside now that the chimney breasts have been covered, it's time to do the final detail. I'm using 400 grit sandpaper just to place over the top. Now you see where I'm going with this. I'm more or less doing the same as what's on that Elinor iron plate layers hut. And then once this is on, I'll just put some card around the edge. But in two corners, I shall... Um, put a hole in it to allow for a drain pipe either side and here we have the roof um, finished 
uh, complete with the lead flashing around the chimney breasts. Two toothpicks um, that have been sanded down for the um, chimney pots. Uh, the reason I use the toothpicks because I like the idea of the slope in the toothpick which kind of matches what's in the photograph. Um, I've also drilled a couple of holes, one there, one there. So that will be like um, the outlet holes for any water that's on the top of the roof to drain out. And uh, yeah, I kind of like the way that that's turned out at the moment. So it just requires painting. And then once that's done, it's just a case of doing the drain pipes on either side. One here and one here. So as you can see, I've painted the concrete and uh, mat 240. And I've done the same with the chimney breast, just topped that off with concrete as well. So there's only one more final detail to add to these, and that's the drain pipes. Same as before, solder wire but this time just using a couple of little bits of card to space it off the wall. So I'm just finishing this off now. The next thing to do is just uh, weather it off. Oh, weather it off. So as you can see I've painted the concrete now all the way around and underneath as well so you've got a nice doubled edge there on the roof which kind of sets it off and I've done the same with the chimney breast had a little bit of grey concrete there uh, Mat 240 is, is the paint I use so I'm just about to finish off the hut or office just by painting these drain pipes uh, usual way a little bit of um, solder wire and spaced it off with a couple of bits of card and once this is done all I've got to do is just weather it up and here we have the office and way bridge finished um, this is uh, 80 Pullins one um, as you can see, you can see all the detail in there. If you look close enough, you can see the Weybridge counter at the back there in the office. And the chap there with his hands in his pockets. Uh, the desk and chairs, fireplace. And if you just turn it slightly, that way you can just make out the scales. So yeah, it's it's been an interesting build. It's a new, unique building. That's that's for sure. Um, this one obviously has the battery pack. Um, the roof just lifts off, and uh, there we go. It reveals the battery pack. I think this is brilliant for those of you who um, would like to use batteries rather than um, um, LEDs. Um, the height that it sits in, you're looking at seven millimeters from the top there down over. You can barely see it um, inside. Barely see it. Right, so let's go and have a look at it on the layout. So here's where my one is going to go on the layout, but I've got a bit of a problem. The board for the layer is not finished. As you can see, it's a dirty great big hole underneath, but that's where it's going to sit once I extend the baseboard out this way. But originally, it wasn't at this side of the station. It was over here. It was just about here where my finger is um, at the entrance of the goods yard because um, the, the coal yard or would have been around here that's now defunct 
but I still wanted to make that building. And that's where it's going to stay. Um, once I get that baseboard in, it's not going to be that very wide. It's going to be just a couple of hundred mils, just so that I can sit back a bit further. And uh, that's where it's going to stay. It's been an interesting build. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty about it, especially with the the flat roof and not knowing what's inside one of these um, wage bridge offices. But yeah, it's been fun to do and uh, look forward to the next project, whatever that will be. So, thanks for watching now. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.